Welcome back to Simbright Fashion Academy YouTube channel for another interesting tutorial. In this class, I'll be teaching you how to make this beautiful bustier flayed gown with balloon sleeves, with basic sleeve under the balloon sleeve, okay? So if this is what you want to learn in this class, please stay tuned to the end of this tutorial. Thank you. So to begin this tutorial, to sew this beautiful gown, first you will be needing this fabric. So this is an Adire fabric. I got three yards of it for the combination. And this is also another uh, kind of print. And I got six yards, okay? Because we are going to have uh, the major flayed part with this. So just as it is on the thumbnail, this is three yards, this is six yards. So, of course, I will not make use of all the six yards. Okay, but it's better you are on the safer side. If you have an excess, you can use it for any other style or design of your choice. So, I got myself um, three yards of uh, trimming. That is velvet trimming to design this dress and my zipper. Then we need... Our pattern so for the upper part of this dress I'll be using a doll face satin fabric to line it it's actually a bustier then you need your pattern drafting so this is my pattern which uh, is my basic bodies pattern which I've already drafted so of course you know how the basic bodies pattern looks like we usually have the front pattern and the back Pattern. So this back, back pattern piece is my body. The back, I don't have any that to it because I'm not putting any that to my back bodies. But the front, I have a that to it because of the busty. My neck right here, neckline here is my natural neckline. Okay, my bust is 40 divided by 12. Bust 40 divided by 12. So whatever your bust is, that will give you your neckline. Okay, your actual neckline. So if you're on the bigger size and you use 3 by 3, believe me, it will choke. This is a high neckline. So it's better if your bust is 50 divided by 12, whatever you have, you use it right here. So I use 40 divided by 12. That is what I use for the depth and for the width of this neckline. And for the back, I use the same bust divided by 12 for the depth, uh, for the width. The width for front and back should be the same, of course, you know. And I'm using one inch. It's a high neckline. So I want to start off this tutorial right away. Well, we are starting the drafting from this front. So from the front neckline, the first thing you are going to do is to... So we are going to quickly divide the shoulder seam line you can see how i place my tape divide by two then you get the midpoint i'll connect this midpoint to my first point this is the shoulder line which is the starting point so in case you are a beginner in this class this is the shoulder line this is our chest line we have a detailed video on how to make this um, particular pattern on this channel so if you don't know how to make a basic bodice pattern please you can check out our uh, basic bodice pattern here on this channel so this is bust point under bust and this is my waistline that is for the front i have the same for the back i have my shoulder i have my chest line i have my waistline for the back so if you look at the waistline for the back you can see it's shorter what I mean by shorter is this, here and here, to where this one stops. So within this range, if you take the measurement, that is 2 inches. Can you see? 2 inches. And it's that 2 inches that we use for our bust. Like that. So if you have not watched the basic body, please try and go back to the basic body to understand what we are doing here. So once you have connected, the next thing we want to do is to create this neckline. So the neckline for this dress, from the center front line, this is my center front line, this part, and it's usually on fold, depending on the style you are making. So I'll place my tape here. I'm using this part of my tape because this part is not good. So from here, I'll come in by half an inch. 
so that when I open it, I'll have one inch. I need anything, everything at one inch. So I'm taking half from here to here, half an inch. So this half an inch now, I'll connect it this way. Can you see how I did that? From here, I'll just connect it that way. So this is going to be the yoke part of this dress, which we are going to cut and join back. So you are going to see how we do all of this in this class. Then this is the armhole. So now, once I'm done with that, the next I want to do is to contour the over bust, okay? So we are going to contour the over bust part. And to contour the over bust, we are going to use this line to do that. So here, I'm going to place my tape. I'll go in here by 0 0.75 and I'll come out here by 0 0.75. So the contouring of this over bust is actually optional. It's optional. You can contour or you might not contour. But for this class, I'll just contour the over bust. So this is the over bust line. And that is the dart which we are going to take off this pattern. So don't uh, bother about replacing any of that. Remember, the neckline right here is running into the armhole. Can you see? So if it's running into the armhole, it's being taken care of. Everything here is taken care of on the armhole. I have a lot of videos which I have explained when to replace your overboss that and when not to replace your overboss. So you can check out our videos on this channel to know when to replace. So whenever neckline runs into the armhole, we don't replace the dart because it's taken care of on the armhole. So now next is my under bust contour. So this is the under bust. So your under bust, you have to take firmly what you have on your under bust, your tape around your under bust, divide by four. I have 8.75. So what I have here left is 1.25. My dart is 1.5. So if you want to contour your underboards very well, 1.5. We also have a detailed video here on the best method of contouring our underboards. You can check all of this out to learn how this is being contoured. So from here to here is 1.5. That is your dart if you want to get a good contour line. So once you have 1.5 and automatically you take your tape around your underboard and divide by 4 mark mine is 8.75 so what i have here is 1.25 so 2.0.25 which is a quarter i'll impute it there and one inch i'll bring it here so once i've brought it there i'll come over this way you can see how i place my pattern ruler to connect so make sure you follow this instruction to connect appropriately so you have your under bust contoured very well so i'll connect this line to this line as you can see so now we are done right now and we have nothing to replace anywhere because this that i have here was replaced when i drafted my pattern my waist circumference is nine my that is one so this is where I should have my, my waist circumference is 36 divided by 4 is 9. So this is 9. And this is 1.5, which is the dart replacement. So you need to replace your dart on the waistline for you to contour your under bust. And it gives you that perfect fit at the end of the day. So follow the instructions, you will get it appropriately. So we are done with this front bodies right now. So I want to go over to the back before we cut. The pattern is very easy. So for the back, I have my waist divided by, which is 9 inches, divided by 4, which is 9 inches. And I have my, my bust 40 divided by 4, which is 10 inches. So what I'm going to do is to contour my back because the human back is not straight. So from the center back, I'll go in by 0 0.75 or 3 quarter to avoid zip bulge. So you can see how I place my pattern ruler this way so everything here will go out but once you are done with that simply come from this because this is the new center back now you now place your tape on the new center back and do what and re remark your waist divide by four so i'll remark my nine inches here 
I'll come over here. I'll remark my 10 inches. Can you see? So if I've done this, it means I've replaced what I contoured. And at the end of the day, I will not have any shortage at all for this dress. So I'm adding everything I contoured. So this is the contour line and it has been taken care of. So like I said, the neckline remains the same. The neckline remains a high neckline. Okay? Because this is more or less a high neckline. So unless you want to reduce uh, what you have, maybe you want to make it deeper. But you can even do that on the fabric. Okay, if you feel the neckline is somehow um, high or choky, after making the dress, you can reduce it. But for now, this is what we are going to have right here. So I just cut out my pattern. I'm cutting out. So I'm cutting the back um, pattern right now. You can see how I'm doing that. So this back pattern right now, I'm going to cut two times of it to form right and left. This is the zipper position. This is our zip part. We'll add our, um, all our seam allowance on our fabric. So by the time I do that, you see what I did. So for the back, we'll just go ahead. Then we'll come over to the accommodation. So I just cut it through the Then I will now take my yoke away that goes into the armhole. Can you see that? So I take off this bag, then close up my bust that. So that's my boss that I close it up. So can you see? I've closed up my bust that. So now this is all our patterns. Can you see? So next you will do is just to match it up to be sure. From the bust point to the chest line. To be sure you don't have any shortage so if you notice you can see we have a whole lot of shortage so the shortage we have is normal it's very very normal so all we are going to do is to do what just put a piece of paper on it this way the part that we have the shortage we just put a piece of paper Apply adhesive or whatever you wish to use. Then bring it back. Make sure you match bust point to bust point. Match chest line to chest line. It has to be on the chest line for you to identify the shortage. So I'll just go ahead and do what? Place my, uh, my ruler again from that point to the can you see from the beginning of that uh, line and I'm going to do what make sure it aligns back it aligns back to where we started and this is where can you see so that's what you, you need to do at that point so you just bring it and take off this so it's as simple as that so I'll go back 
and cut back so i'm just taking my time to show you this so you don't just go joining um the dress that way okay so here is it and this is it so by the time we join right now at least we have something very close then we'll come back with our yoke the yoke we we'll start from this point after the half an inch and it will go this way i'm just trying to show you a picture of what we have so you can see this is the armhole and we have nothing to lose at all so doing it having it this way run this way will tell you what you have on the fabric at the end of the day so we are good to go with this pattern and we are going to cut this on fabric right now I will replicate them, add my seam allowances on the fabric, on the lining, and I will be back to show you. Alright, so for this fabric, I have three years of it. So what I usually do is, uh, so I don't run out of the uh, fabric. What I usually do is, before I cut my upper busty, I like to cut the flay for the down. So whatever I have, I can use it for my upper part. So now we are done drafting, we are going to cut these three yards. We are using these three yards for our flay. So our flay is half a circle, half circle. And you know that half circle is 180 degrees, okay? So this 180 degrees, we'll be using 3.14, okay? That is the formula for it. So now, my waist I'm working with, my round waist um, measurement I'm working with is 36. So this 36 inches, I will add 2 inches um, for zipper allowance. So my 2 inches for zipper allowance now, I will divide everything by 3.14. So whatever I have is going to serve as the radius. So my radius right now, 36 plus 2 is 38, divide by 3.14. I'm working with 12 inches as my radius. So this 12 inches now, the length of my Ankara, uh, the length from uh, uh, for the skirt part of this dress is 30. So I'm using 30 from my waist on the skirt line to the hem. I'm using 30. So plus my radius, which is 12, everything will give me 42. So now I'm going to um, fold my 360, uh, my 180 degrees flare. So I'm using three yards, like I said. So three yards will be enough for that flay from your waist to the hem. It's going to be very much enough. So I folded it. As you can see, I folded it equally. Can you see that? So now this is the folded edge. So I'll just bring in the folded edge right away. So if you are making a 360, all you uh, are 180 degrees. All you need to do is to do what? Just fold your three yards of Ankara into two and have one part folded edge. So it is from that one part folded edge now that we start to mark our. From this point, we are going to mark our 42. 42 lengths. So I'm going to mark my 42 inches. Can you see? I'll mark the first one. Marking the 42 length all around right now, and I'm cutting it out as you can see, marking the radius as well. So this is the half a circle, and that is what we are going to work with right now, okay? So you can see we have the full half circle. So by the time we get to the down part, I'll show you how to create that um, other part of the flay. Let's go back to the table. So I cut um, the lining as well, but on a shorter length. The length of the lining is shorter than the main fabric, but it's still half a circle with the same radius calculated. Okay. So right now we'll go over to the table. I'll be showing you how to cut out the pattern of the mixed fabric so to create that pattern you can see i still have my half a circle on fold can you see so this is my center front 
okay i'll make a notch to my center front and this is my center back where i have the zipper so to create that pattern i'm going to measure <clears throat> unfold from center front to the uh, center back so here i have 20 inches so the midpoint of my center front center back is 10 inches so i'll mark 10 inches for the upper part so once I've marked these 10 inches on the upper part, I will turn the down part. You can see me turning the down part. So from the down part center front to the down part um, um, center back, I'll also take the measurement of what I have from there and find the midpoint. Or you can just do this. This is the back um, center back and this is the center front just match them together and place your notch so i just match them together this way and then once i have it together this way i'll now place my notch to find the center for the both of them okay all right so once that is done i'll open it up again to the part I have my, my front, to the part I just notched. So I'm going to rule a, a line on that point. Can you see? I'll just rule a line meeting what I have on this. Okay? So this becomes the side of this flay dress. So the next thing I will do after that is to place my this is my waistline my waist is 17 so i'll simply place my 17 inches because i have half an inch i'll bring in half an inch and place it at 16 and a half so whatever your waist is just uh, come in by half an inch and place it the waistline okay that is your front length then mark your hip on that line my hip is nine nine inches i'll count one two three four inches that is where we'll start the creation of that flip so from this point to the center front from the center front i will mark two inches uh, one inch sorry so when i open it i'll have two inches so this is one inch so now I'm going to create a curve. Can you see me? I'm using my hand to create that curve we have right there on that dress for the other part of the flake. So it depends on how you want this flake to run. If you still want to connect it to the hip line, it's all by choice. You can come down by 4 inches. You can come down by 2 inches. Okay? So it depends. So on the hem line, I'll also come in on the hemline of the center back. I'll still come in by half. Um, I'll come in by two inches because one inch is my zipper allowance. So to have that, I'll come in by two inches. So I'll come in by two inches and I'll continue that curve. Can you see? I'll continue to meet up. So what I'm having on this curve, I just feel like making it rounded so i can just decide to go a little bit up from my hip line let me just come down by by one and a half i just want the curve or this is what we'll do to get it accurately on this part just fold it this way so we cut everything at once i believe this class is you're understanding what i'm doing here so what I will do, as I folded it now, at that one and half, I'll just create, I just want it to fall. That's what I'm, I'm actually trying to achieve. Can you see? So I think it fold at one and half for me. So it depends on where you actually want that to be. So the way it is now, I'll come over here and I'm going to cut... Okay, so I'm supposed to add my half inch seam allowance, but since I've started cutting, it's okay. So I'll just go ahead and cut off the upper, this part. And this is what I'm going to use. Okay, so I'll just cut this way. Can you see? So 
So this is what you are going to have. So we'll place this on the fabric. We are going to fold the other fabric. Place this on, on top of it. And that will be the continuation of what we have on this. Okay. So this is what our flare looks like. So by the time we add the other part, it gives us that effect. So now I come in with the other fabric, as you can see. So I've already placed it on fold to the extent that will accommodate the other part. So this is my folded edge. I'll place it on another fold. Okay. So I've placed it on another fold. So I'll just go ahead and do what? And place what I've cut out on top of it. So this is what I've cut out. And this is the folded part of it. So the folded part of it, you can see these parts are unfold. They are unfold. So the uh, folded part of it, I'll just simply place it and pin. Okay, so I can just move it a little to have. Okay. So I'll pin it now and I'm going to cut it out again. So now you can see what I have. So on this part, I added 0 0.5 to stitch it to the upper part of the dress. Okay. And here on the hem, I did not add anything because I have the length already. So I didn't add any seam allowance. So that is how to go about it. So I'll just come over here and notch. I'll also come over here on the hem and notch. Okay, so the notches will show the side that will be on the side. So I'll take off my pin, take off this one. I don't need this one again. So I'll bring back what I have right here. Can you see? So when I open it, this is what I have. And I'm going to place my notch, okay? Place your notch on this line also. So when we are joining this, the essence of this notches is so that when you are joining, you know where exactly uh, to join to the side. So I just place my notches, as you can see. All right, so now, when I open it up, I know this is my side. And I'll bring in one of them. There are two, one for front and one for back. So this is how we are going to join it. So we'll join it from here to here. And at the end of the day, it gives us that flay effect we have on the thumbnail. Can you see? So right now, I'm going to join this one to this one. Then join the other one. Then I'll bring it back for you to see. So now I've cut out my patterns for the upper piece and I'm placing my notch. I'm, I've sewed my bust here as you can see right there, trimming them off. I'm sewing my yoke. So now you can see I'm done joining the yoke right now. So this is what you expected to have at the end of the day. So if you have something like this, simply do what? Cut it off. So that is how to join the yoke. I also did the same for the lining. So you can see I joined the yoke for the lining. So I also trim off what I have there as excess, as you can see. All right, so we are done now. So the next thing we want to do now is to come in with our bias. So you just sew your bias. So I'll just change my thread now and use my red uh, thread to sew the bias. So let me do that now. I have sewn my uh, velvet bias. So next is to bring the lining. This is the lining. I'll, I'm going to match the neckline right side to right side. So I'll sew a 0 0.5 and top stitch. So once I'm done with that, I'll also sew the back neckline. So I'm going to do all of this as I get to my machine right now. So the back neckline 
I'll just bring them the way they are. Just lay them right side to right side, this way, that way. So I'm going to sew the neckline, top stitch, give them a good press. So once I'm done, I'll equally join lining to lining at the same allowance of 2 2 inches, fabric to fabric at the same allowance of 2 2 inches. I'll do it then, I'll bring it back for you to see. All right, so now I'm done with the neckline, as you can see. So I've joined them, lining and fabric, as you can see, and I top stitched. So I'll just go ahead and give it a good press. Then for the back piece, I've also joined them and top stitched. Can you see? So everything is ready right now. So it's time for us to sew the seam line. So to sew the seam line, I'll just pick up one of them like this. Can you see how I have it? Then I'll open up this, match this to this, and flip everything this way. I'll flip everything and secure with my pin. So that's how I'm going to sew the four of them. So I'll have, I'll just run my stitch here. So I'll have a perfect instant finishing. So I'll do that for the boot now. So now you can see I'm done joining the neckline. So I have lining and fabric as one piece, as you can see right here. So the next thing I'm going to do is to flip the back. I'm going to join my fabric to fabric at two inches. I'll join lining to lining. I'll do that for the rest part of this dress. So the next thing is to start sewing the down piece of it. So we've already cut out the down piece of it. So all we need to do is to attach to sew this part. Okay. We are going to sew it now. So I'll just go ahead and so the notched part, the part I notched. So I'm going to get the the um, the front piece and match it up with my front, right side to right side. That's what I mean. On the notch for one piece. So I'll now go ahead and sew. I'll do the same for the other part. All right, so now you can see I'm done joining the, this is the center front and I've joined the other patch. As you can see, I joined it up to the center back, can you see? So the next thing we will do now to the flare half circle is to start sewing the trimming. So unfortunately, I don't have enough um, trimming right here. So if you want to know the exact num uh, quantity of trimming you need, all you need to do is to measure from this point. Just take the measurement to this point. So whatever you have, times it by two, that will give you the exact trimming. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I'll just go ahead and sew my trimming to wherever it will get to. Even if it's on the side, it gets to. I can get another trimming to continue with it later. So I'm done running my trimmings, as you can see. So I'm going to join the upper part of this half circle. So this is a half circle flay, and this is the center front. I'll just come in with my bust here right now. I'll sew only the center the fabric. So I'll put the dots together to find the mid or center front. So this is the center front. I place a notch to it. I already have my notch for the flay. So I'm going to sew around it now from center front to the end, center front to the end. All right, so I've, I'm done joining the bustier and the down piece. So I'm going to sew the lining as well. I'll be sewing lining the flay 
to the uh, for the lining okay so i'll sew it on the lining part all right so now i'm done installing my zipper to the dress and we are done with this dress so this is the zipper so we are going to go over to the sleeve right now so for the sleeve you need your basic sleeve okay so i've cut out my basic sleeve and i've added my seam allowances so i cut it one inch above my elbow line so this is my elbow line i stepped up one inch for it so we need the basic sleeve first so make sure you place a notch for the front sleeve okay so i've placed my notch and i'm going to put my sleeve together to make to create my sleeve head so i'll just place a notch for my sleeve head so i'll set this one aside we are going to pleat our balloon sleeve inside the basic sleeve right now so let's create the balloon sleeve so now for the balloon sleeve you have to place your fabric on fold as you can see i place my fabric on fold so this is what i have <clears throat> so this fabric came at um, ankara length of 45 so when you place it on fold it will be half of it as you can see so right now i'm going to create my balloon sleeve so to create a, that balloon sleeve i'll place it on fold once again so i'm placing it on fold so the second fold that is what i'm making right now for the sleeve so this second fold you are going to fold it in a way that you have them um, because we are going to pleat the upper part of this so you fold it in a way that you have about 20 inches can you see 20 inches width so that is how i placed it so when placing it on fold make sure that you fold it at 20 inches so the width when placed on on another fold will be 20 inches so from the folded part i'll place my tape and make sure I measure 20 inches okay so that is my 20 inches so from the upper part now I'll just come down I'm going to come down by four and a half inches so this four and a half inches will serve as where the sleeve head is going to start okay so this is where the sleeve head is going to start from the upper part, measure four and a half inches and rule your line. Then from this point, you'll be having about 18 inches left. Can you see? You have about 18 inches left from that point. So if you're using Ankara, you surely get exactly these figures. So now I'm going to measure on this line my 20 inches and make my mark i'll go to the hem i'll measure 20 inches and i'll create my mark so i'll just go ahead and do what rule a straight line to meet just to form a box 20 inches by 18 inches after the four and a half so now the next thing i will do this is my sleeve head now i'll also come down by another four and a half inches which will serve as my sleeve cap so i'll rule a line right now which will serve as my sleeve cap so because we are going to have a gather that's why i have to take from end to end 20 inches so i'll find the midpoint of 20 which is 10 okay so this midpoint of 20, which is 10, I'll come up to the next line. I'll mark same 10 inches and I'll mark my line. Then within this line and this line, I'll divide and get my midpoint. So that is my midpoint. So at this midpoint right now, I'm going to place the sleeve curve. Okay. So if I'll be using my pattern ruler, for the sleeve curve 
I'll, have, I'll be placing it this way and placing it this way just like we have we when making your sleeve so i just place it can you see so what this is what you you are going to have then i'll come up from this point by 0 0.5 for the back sleeve i also place my pattern ruler from there for this back sleeve i repeat the same from that half an inch to meet with what I have right there. <clears throat> so now I've created my back sleeve. So now this excess we have here, we want the we want to have it pop up. We need this sleeve to pop up a little bit. So to pop up a little bit, I'll just do this. Can you see? So all this part are the parts I'm going to gather for this particular sleeve. So I'll just go ahead and do this. Okay, so by the time we gather it, we are going to see the result. So I'm going to cut everything now, both back and front sleeve together. So for this particular sleeve now, we are not, no longer going to make use of our um, front and back. We'll use one as the same. So I'll make my notch. And this is the whole sleeve I'm going to gather to form the balloon sleeve. So now this part, I'll just cut it straight, the 20 inches, I'll cut it straight. Okay, so that's how we are going to form this balloon sleeve. So by the time I gather this on the basic sleeve, this is my basic sleeve. So by the time I go over to the machine now, creating my gathers. So I will have everything, I will have everything, I will sew everything. To this point, I will start gathering my sleeve. Can you see? I will start gathering my sleeve, I will start gathering my sleeves. You can see the puff. Then I will come over here too. And I'm going to gather, gather, gather. You can see the sleeve is forming the puff. So there are so many kinds of balloon sleeve okay so you can do this you can do so right now this is the hem part of my sleeve you can see i've placed my gathers from end to end and this is the the sleeve uh, head so i also placed my run run my gather stitches to the sleeve i also run my gather stitches so I just want to show you how I'm going to gather this. Remember, I have my notch on the sleeve head. So once I get to this sleeve head, I'll just stop. So I'm pushing all my gathers to form that puff on the sleeve head. Then I'll pick up the, the thread I'm picking for my gathers is the one below. Okay, of course you know how to make your gathers. So I'll just gently pick this to the sleeve and you see it's forming the puff for us that puff we need is forming right there so this is it can you see so you can see how the sleeve looks like so i'll just come in, come over with my pattern uh, my sleeve cap so this is the front part of it i'm still taking note of it so the sleeve cap is going to be the way you are going to attach it, this is the right side. So I'll just turn right side to right side. That's how we are going to attach it. So I'll go over to the machine now. I'll sew my gathers to this, to the end. Can you see? I'll sew it from end to end. Then I'll come back. So now you can see I'm done sewing the gathers on the basic sleeve. So the next thing we are going to do is to put them together. Okay? So we are going to put them together <clears throat> this way on the seam and I'll just sew off my seam allowance. So whatever you add for your seam allowance, if it's 1 inch or 0 0.5, just sew across it. So I'll do that now. So now I'm, I've sewn it from end to end. So the next I will do is to bring in, turn it to the right side. So I'm turning it to the right side. 
so the basic sleeve will now be inside of the dress of the sleeve so I'll match my sleeve seam to seam then after that you find a notch for the gathers and notch for the basic sleeve so I now go over to my machine I'm going to place this way to sew on top of my gather so I push all the gathers to the sleeve head so I have the puff I need all right so these are my sleeves right now you can see the inside of the sleeve is with the basic sleeve but it has the puff outside so that's how to go about this balloon sleeve okay so the same thing for this so now I'm going to look into the sleeve to find out the front piece so this is where I have the notch for the front meaning that this part will be for the right so this is the front and this is the mark I have so I'll just sew the sleeve right so I'm going to turn this to the to the wrong uh, side so I'll be able to sew my sleeve so this is the sleeve that is on the right side so I'll just push in the sleeve and match seam line to seam line match armhole to armhole okay so i'll just go to my machine pin and sew around i'll do that for the both sleeves all right so we come to the end of this tutorial i have sewn my balloon sleeve at least you have learned another method of sewing your balloon sleeve okay so with a basic sleeve inside so you can see the inside of the sleeve looks neat and fine and this is what the front dress looks like can you see that so thank you very much for coming to this tutorial and if you are new to this channel please kindly subscribe turn on your notification bell to receive videos like this every day like this video share to family and friends Drop your comment on the comment section and your suggestions as well. Thank you for coming. See you in the next class. Bye.